Hey guys, I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether y'all are watching it in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I'm glad you're all here. Real quick, just want to say thank you to all the channel members. Thank you all. And thank you anyone who's come in to check out the knife, the EDC content. I'm really glad you're here. I know it takes time, and I appreciate it. If you're so inclined and you haven't had a chance yet, if you do hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon, it will really help me out. So today, what I wanted to do is kind of do an updated top five of my EDC carries in terms of fixed blades. Sub, like, I would call them supplemental carries. I like to try to carry an EDC fixed blade, a small one, with me on the daily. And... Um, Kind of wanted to go over which ones have been in my pocket this year the most um, as of February. So I did this back in 2022. I've done a lot of top EDC fixed blade knives, but these are the ones that I brought in the collection that I find in my pocket more than others. And number five is without doubt going to be the little Amsler Tools Hurricane Razor. I've got the Mini here in MagnaCut, and then I've got the Standard here in uh, S35VN. And these are the little Tanto grinds. And I think of these knives, guys, kind of as I do a ballpoint pen. Because I carry these knives in my shirt pocket, just like so, and then I'll clip it into my pocket, or I can put it in my back pocket in the Kydex sheath. It could be worn as a neck knife if you wanted to, and I have carried this as a neck knife, but I prefer to carry it like I would a ballpoint pen. They've got great titanium clips. The standard has more of a built-up clip, where the mini has a tighter short clip, but they both work really well. You can take off or add O-rings to these guys right here. Each of these Amsler tools comes with a set of O-rings. So I think it came with like six or seven O-rings for each one of these tools. So if you wanted to, you know, O-ring it up while you were using it, you could. Um, you could use paracord if you wanted to, if you wanted to wear it as a neck knife. The clip will come off if you don't want to use the clip, if you want to use it with either an ulti clip or with a neck knife. But these guys, for opening packages, for cutting into stuff, for slicing through stuff, for um, really just about anything in a city environment that's going to, whether it be ripping open a letter, whether it be saving your Slurpee, these guys are very, very slicey. The front grind. But I love these little guys. I find them very useful. I find them very utilitarian. Um, they're great for detail cuts. If you're cutting out labels, if you're trying to, again, cut through a bunch of tape or paracord, it does have a very short blade, so you don't have a lot of cutting edge. But I think, for me, that's the beauty of a small EDC fixed blade. I'll always have a primary knife in my right pocket. Today, it happens to be the Kung Wu Pulsar, or Padre. But, talking about my top five EDC fixed blades... For the daily carry, find the most time in my pocket right now, as of February 2024, number five is the Amsler Hurricane. And number four is going to be a little bigger knife. Again, it's another knife that I like so much that I bought it twice. I started out with this particular version. This is the Boker slash daily carry AK1. It is a knife that's designed for everyday carry. It was kind of a foraging hunting knife designed by a guy over in Scandinavia, if I'm not mistaken, um, looking for the perfect sized EDC knife. 
and this is a great a great solution it's um we'll talk about it more in detail but it's a great small nimble knife that really can replace my primary edc knife i could carry this as a primary all day long the blades a little over three inches but they come in several different trim levels so this is one of the nicer ones this is an rwl 34 um it is got removable scales like the other one does but it has this little kind of puzzle piece lanyard um, hook here where if you take the scale off you can flip this little piece over and you'll get a lanyard loop like is on this g10 version here which is a less expensive model which we'll look at next but a great little knife um and this one was in the I want to say I got it around Black Friday in the upper twos. And then I saw this one on Instagram and then went to the Boker site and did a little research on it. It does not have, A, it's in N690 instead of RWL. And this little lanyard piece here is part of the tang. So it doesn't have that two-piece lanyard where you can flip that around. But that's really the only difference I can tell. Again, with this... Um, blade you've got this american tanto blade that's very thin very slicey compound ground front the same exact grip as the rwl 34 same exact length same exact blade thickness and this guy is in the mid 100s like 160 i think something like that and guys these are small knives i've got the uh the american tanto that's in the 160 range comes with a uh, kydex sheath and i carry it in my back pocket with an ulti clip and then the rwl 34 comes with a leather sheath with a built-in ulti clip which i also carry in my back pocket but talk about a therapeutic slicer guys This will tear through cardboard, absolutely tear through boxes, tear through paper, tear through rope, tear through wood if you need to cut around a fire. These little guys are just so well done. They're made in Sologen, Germany, so they're German bokers. And just fantastic feeling little knives. Um, they're popular for a reason. I didn't know much about them until I started seeing them when I got into my fi uh, fixed blade fetish, I'll call it, where I started really getting interested in fixed blades. I always liked the look of it, but it was always kind of out of my price range, that perceived price range that kind of always moves on us. Um, but when I picked this one up, I knew it was something special. I knew that's why people liked it, and I carry it. A ton um, so much so that when I saw that they had it available at American Tanto and it was a lower price model I was stoked to get it so guys number four in my top five are gonna be the Boker AK-1 um, these are kind of interchangeable like the Amsler tools are because I carry them mixed up just depending on when I'm when I'm carrying them so guys that brings us to number three Number three, not too long ago, was my number one. Um, and still, when I talk about these five knives, they're all kind of interchangeable because I carry them all a lot. Um, one of my chickadees is out being tried out by brother uh, Lord Needham, who he and I have been sharing a few knives back and forth. And he's, I think, found it a little small for his hands, which I can understand because this is going to be the smallest in this setup here, right? So the Chickadee is a little five inch knife. I've got the Magna Cut that Brother Lord Needham has, and then I've got the S90V is the full flat grind right up here on the top, and then the 20CV is the blue micarta here. But for me, as a secondary carry, I don't have a huge hand. I've got a large hand, about three and a half inches across here right 
And just for comparison's sake, there's a Sharpie. So you can see how that kind of fits in my hand. But anyway, I love the little three finger elegance of this knife. I love the way Jacob Creates makes these. I love that when you take the scales off or change the scales out, which I have changed the scales out on these before because Jacob sells replacement scales, but you've got this thick full tang like S90V or 20CV, and then you've got this blade steel stamped into the handle as you do Jacob Creates, so you do have some information behind those scales and just a great little cutter. A little box destroyer, a little letter opener, a ripper, a slurpee saver, um, just a fantastic little knife. Whether I carry it in the Oak City leather pocket dropper sheath, which I've got a couple of, two of the chickadees I picked up came with the Oak City leather uh, slips because I bought them on the secondary. And then this one I picked up um, new on a drop, the 20CV, and it came with just the, um, excuse me, just the uh, Kydex sheath, but I use my lefty EDC, which is a left-handed Oak City leather slip, because again, I carry it in my back pocket, and it works perfectly, and the blue kind of matched the blue of this handle, and like I said, Lord Needham has got the one that used to ride in this one and this is the one i need to send to brother kyle coonley to get it touched up but this is the jacob creates chickadee it'll be the smallest knives in this little uh top five but the knives that i love these guys are fantastic knives i'm a huge fan and uh, they're gonna come in at number three which brings us to number Oh, hold on. Five, four, three, two. Oh, this is number three because I've actually got six, guys. I apologize for that. So this is going to be number three. These were number six, which will actually be, we can call them honorable mentions. But just so you guys can get an idea. There are those guys next to the Sharpie. And the Boker. And this here is a knife that turned out to be one of the biggest surprises of the year. And I think the big, as big of a surprise as the knife's usability is the sheath. I never thought I'd carry anything vertically like that. But this knife's actually set up to carry perfectly right at my, like, on my hip, right above my back pocket, say at a four o'clock position. But this is the Bark River Knives Micro Canadian in 3V. This little knife, guys, is a hard use, small little beast of a knife. You've got this super sharp spine. And I don't know if you can see that black stuff on it. I don't know if you can see the black stuff on my mat here. But this is a ferro rod striking beast. It really will put out some sparks. The 3V is super, super strong. The one I picked out has micarta and a lime green G10 liner. Comes with this leather sheath, which again, I did not think I was going to use this little sheath. What's great about it is you can mount an ulti clip on it if you want to carry it a different way. But like I say, like if you wanted to drop it in your pocket, I've just dropped it in my pocket like this without even putting it on my belt, without putting it on an ulti clip. But this little guy is sharp as the day is long. It is great for cutting in. It would be a great little skinner if that's what you are into, but it is just a great little cutting tool. And for a secondary or even depending on what your day is gonna hold, a primary carry, it is just a fantastic knife. Fantastic hiking knife, fantastic foraging knife, fantastic EDC city knife, fantastic just all around backup knife. I think it's a great one. Um, 
I'm a huge fan. I would not say that I would not buy another Bark River Micro Canadian if I saw them in other blaze steels. Because when this drop happened, um, I want to say this knife was around $160. They had them anywhere from around 130 to 550 bucks, and the blade, the 3V Micro Canadian blade, was the same on all of them. The difference was the handles. They've got some really high-end, beautiful handles like Bark River does, and then they've got some more basic handles. You could even get the canvas micarta without the liner, and you know you get down in the 130, 140 range. But I would love to find this guy in additional blade steels because again, it's really surprised me the ergonomics, the way it fits in my hand. And you guys know I have a smaller hand, but I can get a full four finger grip on it. A lot of different grips it's very comfortable with. Um, just a fantastic little knife. And if we compare it to our Sharpie, just a little bit shorter than the Sharpie. But that is the Bark River Micro Canadian. Fantastic little knife. And I'm just a, a huge, huge fan. Which brings us to number two. And number two is probably the biggest knife, longest knife in this five lineup. But it is definitely one of my top fives. This is a knife that I set out to get after discovering it at Blade Show with Brother Beard of Doom. He picked one of these up from Colin McGuire, Mag10 USA, Mag10 Knife Works on Instagram. These are little handmade knives that are made in the wonderful state of Maine, if I'm not mistaken, by Colin. Each one is made by Colin. This is one of his plainer, more simple Mag10 uh, EDW is the model number of this one. It is a simple uh, RWL 34 blade steel. When I say it's simple, what he's able to do with Damascus, Colin makes his own Damascus blades. He does some amazing work. I'm talking amazing work. You can tell by looking at the details on this knife, how beautiful the details are. For example, this has got this beautiful 80s uh, camo carbon fiber. You've got these green G10 liners. Look at the detail in those gems. Got this perfect poon, this beautiful swedge. Look at the shape of the blade. Perfect, perfect sharpening choil. Absolutely even bevels just a work of art. I think it's beautiful. I think it's stabby slicey. Um, I love the camo carbon fiber. I don't know if you can see that with that UV light, but it really comes to life. Um, just again, absolutely a win. I picked this up from Colin at the Nashville Custom Knife Show. He was up there. We communicated before I got there. He was the first stop I made. Second stop, actually, because I had to stop by Demko's booth when I walked in. But guys, therapeutic slicer without a doubt. Just an absolutely devastatingly tactical Warncliffe blade, ultra thin, ultra slicey, perfect EDC knife. I've got it on a deep concealment carry clip. I keep it in my back pocket. It is ready to go. I love carrying this knife. It's super light. It's gonna be longer than our Sharpie, but it's gonna be thin and it's balanced absolutely perfectly. And that is Mag10 USA, Mag10 Knife Works, Colin McGuire, EDW, comes in at number two. And it was a struggle looking between two and one, but since these guys don't really have to be a one, two, three, four, five, um, based on the time that I've carried them and the joy that I've gotten out of them and the way they make me feel, I have um, put the 
T. Denny Apprentice is now my top spot carry EDC fixed blade. I carry both of them in the Oak City Leather Slips pocket droppers. They both have Kydex sheaths. Um, so I can carry them on my belt horizontally if I want to in a sheath or I've got the two long and the short slip that one has a discrete carry clip and the other has an ulti clip. But these little guys are absolutely wicked. I love these little knives. The one on the right is a Gen 1 that I got last year. This is a Gen 2 that I just got kind of recently. Um, this one is made in crew wear with a belt satin finish or hand satin finish. This one is MagnaCut with an acid etch finished and caramel car micarta scales, vintage caramel micarta, where these are orange G10 scales. The Gen 2, you'll notice that the sharpening choil has moved back. You had plenty of sharpening choil on the Gen 1. But the Gen 2 moved it back, about three times further back. And now the scales are removable, which is really exciting to me because I love his pin scales. I never thought of even the possibility of changing out the scales. But he does some camo carbon fiber and other materials that are just out of the world. So I'm hoping that these guys will have a... Uh, uh, some scale sales where Tyler will drop some scales. Y'all don't know if you can see that little nick there in the uh, in the spine, but Tyler um, HRC tests all of his blades with the certificate of authenticity. It comes tells you not only blade steel, the birthday, but the HRC test. And guys, these are the sliciest knives. Let me get a piece of paper. I'm working on a new ring, guys. So I start with the Magna Cut, acid etched. And then the satin crew wear. Guys, I mean, these little things come from him so sharp. They're so easy to touch up. Stropping them is all I do. And they are just absolute joys to carry. They weigh nothing. The sheaths weigh more than the knives, but they feel great in your pocket. Um, up for anything, whether it's opening letters, opening packages, cutting through a mess of tape, mess of paracord, having to use it to defend the honor of your Slurpee. I mean, there's nothing these little knives on an Urban EDC, that's for me, kind of a city daily carry, typically a supplemental carry to my primary carry. These guys have gotten the most pocket time so far this year, and I love them both very much. So that is number one, is our T. Denny Apprentices. And our number two was our EDW by Colin McGuire. We had our number three, our little uh, micro Canadian in 3V. And we had our little chickadees. And then we had our Bokers, AK-1s. We're and then finally, we cannot leave out our Ampler Tool Hurricane Razors, both the standard and the mini in 80 splatter. So guys, that is my top five EDC fixed blades as of February 2024. Fantastic knives. I love them. I hope you guys found this entertaining and informative. Gives you an idea of kind of what I carry. And uh, I appreciate you stopping by. Please, if you would, and be so kind.
Look out for that guy or gal to your left. Please look out for the guy or gal to your right. Please look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. And please, choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.